This video is focused on the details of how a pressurized water nuclear reactor works. Nuclear power plants are advanced versions of conventional coal power plants. When a furnace in a coal power plant is replaced by a nuclear reactor, it becomes a nuclear power plant. Since a nuclear reactor is a controlled nuclear heat generator, aka a nuclear bomb, it requires a higher standard of safety. While a coal power plant uses two water cycles, one for the steam cycle and the second for the cooling cycle, the nuclear power plant only uses three. The first cycle is the pressurized water cycle, known as the primary cycle, and is leak-proof to prevent nuclear contamination. The second is a steam generation cycle called the secondary cycle. Unlike the pressurized water cycle, this is a leak-prone cycle. The third is the cooling water cycle. Now let's see how these three cycles operate. The primary cycle is contained in a strong concrete chamber where pressurized water passes between the nuclear materials and nuclear heat is transferred to water. The amount of heat generation is controlled by neutron poison rods. The purpose of these rods are to lower the high reactivity of the fuel loads. By adjusting the position of the rods, the amount of heat generation can be controlled. When these rods are completely inserted into a fuel load, neutron absorption slows the nuclear reaction and heat generation goes down. This is demonstrated by changing the background color of the core. When the rods are pulled out, the temperature rises. Temperatures may reach 225 degrees centigrade. This is indicated by the red color of the core in the background. When the rods are completely inserted into the nuclear load, the temperature decreases. This is indicated by the yellow color of the core in the background. Because high water pressure is maintained in the chamber, the water in the cycle stays as water even when temperatures exceed the boiling point. This hot water is sent to the boiler where the heat is transferred to the secondary cycle, which we will describe next. The water leaving the boiler is then pumped back to the core. The secondary cycle consists of a boiler where the heat from the primary cycle is passed to the secondary cycle to generate high pressurized steam. This steam is sent to the steam turbine, which is connected to an electric generator to produce electricity. Steam leaves the turbine under atmospheric pressure and enters the condenser. Cold water coming from the river condenses the steam and condensed water is pumped back to the boiler. The purpose of the steam pipe going from high inlet pressure to the exit bearing is to prevent air from entering the secondary cycle. Since the turbine exit pressure is under atmospheric pressure, air will leak through from the bearings no matter how well the insulation of the bearings may be. Sending pressurized steam through the middle of the bearings prevents the air from leaking into the system. Rather than air entering the system, steam leaks into the environment. If there are any cracks in the pipes, the primary cycle if there are any cracks in the pipes in the primary cycle, nuclear contamination will leak into the secondary cycle and then the environment. The cooling cycle will take the cold water coming from up the river and will cause the steam coming from the turbine to condense. Heated water is pumped to the downstream part of the river as waste heat. It's interesting to know that two-thirds of the heat generated by coal or nuclear power plants is sent to the environment as waste heat. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it since it's dictated by one of the laws of thermodynamics. This concludes our video on nuclear power plants. Please join us next time and don't forget to subscribe.